Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at unrooting the Google Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL and today we'll be using the Google Factory images of course and basically we'll be returning to stock and relocking the bootloader so it's just like you got the phone out of the box. And uh, if you're more inclined to take a look at what we do quickly, you can take a look at the description which has all the timestamps below. So first things first, there are a few things that are required for this video and the first one is an unlocked bootloader and this is usually the case if you've rooted your phone and a computer unless you have another phone but that's another story we'll be doing this on a computer right now and this is what we'll end up doing in this video we'll be downloading the files that we need we'll install the drivers for the usb modes for windows only and then we'll be flashing the factory images to both slots and we'll also check if the phone boots up after that first and then we'll go into relocking the bootloader and just to let you know relocking the bootloader will wipe your phone but we'll be wiping our device before that anyways uh, this will also allow you to take OTAs after you finish unrooting everything and that includes relocking the bootloader However, you don't need to have a locked bootloader to take OTAs And of course we have the timestamps in the more info if you need to skip around If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below or better yet join us on discord And we'll try to help you out as soon as possible and if there's nothing else Let's get started. So there are a few things that we need to download and the first thing is the Google USB drivers Now this is only really applicable for those on Windows You can click on the blue link here and agree to the terms and conditions and download the USB drivers uh, I will save everything into one folder just to make things convenient And the next thing you want to download This is for everyone is the latest version of the SDK platform tools I'll download the one for Windows here and I'll agree to the terms and conditions and download that And I'll also save it into one folder and last but not least you'll need a factory image for your Pixel 4. So I have the Pixel 4 here and I will download the one that I want. So you don't have to download the latest version. Uh, you can download the one from October of 2019 if you really wanted to. But I have just downloaded the latest version here, which I should have this version, the January 2020 version. But you can download any factory image that you want to flash. Now once you have those three files downloaded, here I have the USB drivers, the platform tools, and the factory image itself. And the first thing we want to open up is the USB drivers zip file. Open up that and extract the USB driver folder. Now this is only available for Windows, so if you're on Mac or Linux, feel free to skip ahead till we extract the platform tools. But for those on Windows, let's open up the USB driver folder and you'll find this file called android underscore win usb.inf. You want to right click on that and then click on install. And once that is done, you'll get this dialog. You may have to accept a user account control dialog. Just click yes on that. And once that's installed, head back over to the Android folder and we'll open up the Platform Tools folder now. Now the Platform Tools just includes ADB and Fastboot and a few other executables that we'll use to communicate with our phone from our computer. So extract the entire folder outside just like that. Give that a few seconds and then we can close the zip file. And then once you've done that, let's open up the factory image. Double click on that, open up the folder inside and extract the bootloader, image and radio images outside. Extract those three files. It might take a while, it is a few gigabytes. Alrighty, once those three files are extracted, you can close the factory image zip file and we'll need to go inside the platform tools folder. Since we need to use these programs and they're not in our path environment variable, you can take a look at doing that down below. We need to open up a command prompt window that is changed to this directory right here where our platform tools are located in order to use these executables. So in the address bar, Click on that and type in cmd. This will open up a command prompt window. Hit enter, of course, to open it. This will open up a command prompt window uh, already changed to the platform tools directory, which allows us to run the programs like ADB and also fastboot. And we'll need to keep this window open. I will use my console emulator just to make things a little bit easier to see. And once you've opened it side by side and everything is ready to go, go back to the Android folder and which, where everything else is. And now we can get started with flashing the files to our phone. And to do that, we need to reboot our phone in the bootloader. But before you do that, I recommend that you back up anything that you might need or you might want to keep later on because we will be wiping our device shortly after this. So get your USB cable handy and let's plug in our device. And make sure you have backed up your things like your accounts to the two-factor authentication codes and the normal things like pictures because you won't be getting them back after we're done with this. So once you have your phone plugged in, Let's reboot our phone into the bootloader and we can do that by pressing and holding power, tapping on restart, and as soon as the screen turns black or freezes, you want to hold the volume down button. And there we go, we'll start holding volume down until we get into the bootloader. 
There we go. So it will look something like this. And this is where we can run our first command. You may need to let your uh, computer install the drivers. So give that a few moments. But once that is done, you should be able to type in this command here. Type in fast boot devices. And this will show up the devices that are connected to the computer in fast boot mode. And our device is connected here, which is a good start. So we can start by flashing the bootloader image. And we'll do that by typing in fast boot double dash slot equals all flash bootloader. Leave a space after bootloader and drag in the bootloader image. If you can't drag your image on top like this, you can hold shift and right click on the file that you need, in this case, the bootloader image, and then click on the option copy as path. Now, if I get rid of what I just typed in here and I right click on the command prompt window, it will paste in the location of the image that I need to flash or the one that I just copied. And this slot equals all flag. This allows us or tells the bootloader to flash it to the both the A and B slots, which is exactly what we need since our device has two slots for seamless OTA updates. So let's hit enter on this and this will send it to bootloader A and bootloader B. You should see that flash up. And once that is done, we need to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So let's do that by typing in fast boot, reboot, bootloader. And once our device is in the bootloader, we're going to go ahead and do pretty much do the same thing, but this time with the radio. So let's type in fast boot, double dash, slot equals all, flash, radio. Leave a space after radio, and I'm going to drag it in here. So make sure the command prompt is selected before you hit enter, and that'll solve most of your problems if that comes up. And once you've done that, we need to reboot into the bootloader once more. So let's type in fast boot, reboot, bootloader. Alternatively, you can use the up arrow keys to navigate to previous commands. Now we will flash the rest of the images, and this is the bulk of it. So let's type in fast boot, double dash, skip dash reboot. And we need to put in another double dash and we'll type in slot equals all and then type in update. Leave a space after update and drag in the image zip file, not the factory image, but the image zip file that you extracted earlier outside of the factory image. And you wanna hit enter. This will flash all the images inside the zip file to both the A and B slots. And this will also set your current slot to A. So it'll pretty much reset your phone back to the way it was. And this will reboot our phone into the special user land fast boot mode, just as usual. And uh, we'll wait for this process to finish. Now, in case you get any errors, uh, what I recommend that you do is reboot your phone back into the bootloader, uh, replug in the cable if needed, and also maybe try a different USB port, especially if you're using a USB hub, and try to run the update command again. So the one we just did. So right now it's going to extract all the images to our computer and flash them to both the A and B slots on our phone. So we'll give this a few moments to do and I'll just fast forward this process. Okay, so now that the update has finished, let's wake up our device again. And what we'll do is we'll reboot into the recovery mode to do a factory reset. Therefore, our device's recovery can format our user data and other data related partitions and also wipe any security that was left over such as the security chip that we have in here. So let's navigate to enter recovery from the fastboot D menu, hit power to select that. And then what we can do here is actually go over and go down to wipe data and factory reset. I'll just zoom in a little bit here. There we go. And we'll hit the power button to do so. And then we'll select factory data reset. And you'll see at the bottom there, it'll format our data, metadata, and also wipe our Titan M security chip. And once the data wipe is complete, now we can select reboot system now, and this will reboot our system all the way up to uh, Android. Now, if this phone boots up into Android just fine, then we can check that everything pretty much works just the way it is supposed to. We can go back into the bootloader and relock the bootloader. So we'll just give this a few moments to boot up to make sure that it's okay, and then we'll go ahead and relock the bootloader. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's loaded up. I'm just going to quickly have a look at all this, see that I'll Wi-Fi network is fine and also see that our mobile device service can connect. It looks like it has, which is good. All right, so this is enough for me, but you might wanna go through the whole setup uh, without entering your Google account, of course, just quickly breezing through it. I'm going to restart my phone back into the bootloader now so we can relock it. So again, we need to press restart and hold volume down as soon as the screen turns black and just keep holding that until we get into the bootloader. 
And once we're in the bootloader, let's relock it. So let's go into our command prompt here that we opened before. And what we'll do here is type in fastboot flashing lock, like so, hit enter. Now a device will prompt you to see if you want to actually go ahead and relock the bootloader. And here you can choose the options here. I want to lock the bootloader and we will hit the power button to select that and that'll lock the bootloader successfully. You won't see the padlock anymore. And then you'll also see that our device is now locked. It's in green here. Let's start our device and it should wipe itself again. Uh, and we'll let this boot up. And from there, you can pretty much turn off the phone or set it up as normal if you still want to continue using it. Or you can pack it away and sell it to whoever bought your phone. So that is a way to unroot the Google Pixel 4 and relock the bootloader. This way, we'll also be able to take OTA updates, which is quite important as well. So from here on out, you can set up your phone as per normal. And of course, if you have any questions and any queries, feel free to leave them down below. Or better yet, join us on Discord. And as always, Happy flashing.